Hey, this is Paula. I am here with Byron Paulus. And Byron, I was just interviewing Janet Parshall, and so I missed everything that you had to say. So can you catch me up? Yeah, I think Janet Parshall basically said it all. But, you know, God has put in her heart, as he has leaders all across this nation, this burden that while really the church is kind of sitting back and waiting on the world to become regenerate, that the world is sitting back and waiting on the church to become repentant. So her message on repentance kind of says it all. And then she just kind of led into the fact that she, along with other leaders, and we know many of them, Paula, but that God has just stirred the heart of people to see him together in one cry one cry a nationwide call for spiritual awakening and uh, so I got the opportunity to follow up that message on repentance because as she declared and we know there is no revival apart from repentance so um, did you give like a practical takeaway that you wanted women to do or just more um, solidifying what Janet had said you know, I surely did because uh, I had the opportunity for about 10 minutes to tell them about the One Cry Initiative. And uh, I thought of these ladies sitting out here by the thousands, and many of them I think are saying, what about my husband? What about my church? What about my prayer group? They need to catch this vision of seeking him together and what God could do in sending another spiritual awakening. So I introduced them to the whole movement of One Cry, told them they could go to onecry.com, they could participate, but that really the third great awakening didn't begin with women, though God used their prayers immensely and it's recorded, but laymen, not Christian leaders, not pastors, not ministry leaders, but laymen in the heart of New York City begin to seek the Lord together. And God came. And he spread across this nation an unbelievable prayer awakening, while well, we know it as the Third Great Awakening in 1857-58. So I think God put in the hearts of these women some hope that they could go, just as a, just as a lady, a housewife, a mother, a, a worker, they could bring their co-workers together, their family together, their church together. They could get their husband connected to One Cry. And then practically, I tried to encourage them to go to One Cry because the noontime prayer meeting of the Third Great Awakening, it could be taking place today by way of of, by way of the internet and uh, so there's a noontime text all during October and following where people can get a text at noontime for one, one cry and have one cry together at noontime seeking the Lord for another great awakening and then encourage them also to go there and maybe be a part of the October 30th of which Moody uh, and others are participating some 400 and some stations and Revive Our Hearts is going to be promoting it but this again a two hour concert of prayer on radio where groups will be gathering together and individuals will be listening by the thousands and right before the elections what we'll really be saying is the answer is not in Washington the answer is in heaven and the answer is when God comes in great power and sends his spirit in revival. Well it's been so good to have you here at True Woman and I wonder what it's meant to you to walk around this conference and to see these white circles on the floor. Well I I can't tell you how much that has meant. I have, uh, for years, taken pieces of chalk all across this nation in churches, encouraged people to draw circles. One church in Pennsylvania, uh, between the second and third service, somebody came and got me and took me outside and said, look at this. And there was a huge circle drawn around their entire church campus, a huge church. And they just took that hour and drew a circle around their church campus. So for me to know throughout the country, there have been thousands of circles that has been brought here to True Woman. And for me to see those circles in my, in my, uh, my remarks up there, I shared how uh, God brought the One Cry Initiative into to my heart when a pastor from Uganda asked a question to me at the end of a revival forum where I had the foremost historian on revival, Dick Roberts, a young maverick revivalist on radio out of Dallas who's in his early 30s, Jim Cimbala from the Brooklyn Tabernacle, and theologically on the other end of the spectrum, uh, Colin Hansen from the Gospel Coalition on this panel. And I had a Q&A time at the end. And this, pa this pastor raised his hand. He said, I've got two comments and then a question. So my comment is this. I'm from Uganda. We had revival in Uganda through devastation. And then he said, now we're turning our prayers to America to have revival. He said, but here's my question. What are you as leaders doing to make sure in America it comes by desperation and not by devastation? And at that moment, I drew a circle on my heart in a fresh way, Paula. I got on my knees and I said, God, I'm not desperate enough. God, would you put the kind of desperation in my heart 
so that you could send a sweeping revival to this nation, not through devastation like Uganda, but through the desperate cries of the hearts of his people. May it be so. Thank you, Byron. Thank you.